this is Josh with Glint Window Cleaning. I wanted to give you guys some information as requested on our latest cart build. Um, I'm happy with how this setup turned out. It looks good. And if you guys want to build one like this, guess what? You can. It's not that hard. Uh, I'm not knocking WCR or anybody else because if I were to sell this, I wouldn't sell it any cheaper than they sell theirs. Unless it was to a friend. But, if you are handy, you can do this yourself and save a ton of money. So here's the deal. You're going to need... We're going to start front to back on this. How about that? You're going to need an inlet fitting for your pre-filter. So something that goes from three-quarter pipe thread or whatever size your pre-filter has to garden hose. And I like this kind that has a little valve on it so I can shut it off, throw it in the truck, it doesn't leak. It's great. Then you're going to need a pre-filter, two and a half by ten inch. Two and a half by ten inch filter housing and a carbon block filter to go in it. Um, I'm going to assume if you're watching this you know a little bit about window cleaning so you know what you need there and how often you got to change it. Then you need a three quarter to half reducer because most of these housings are three quarter so you need a reducer that goes to half because three quarter plumbing is too expensive, too overkill, you don't need it. Um, and you're going to get whatever angles and pieces you need to get up to your RO membranes. The inlet on an RO membrane is always the side port, it's not the center one. So when you come into it, you can tee this out off one connection and then go into each of these side ports on the inlet side of your RO housing. The outlet side's just the opposite, but your flush port is going to come out of the center. So on the outlet side of your RO housing, and I should say pressure vessel, because these RO things are called pressure vessels if you're going to try to buy one. Uh, so on the bottom side, out of the center port is where your flush valve gets hooked, and you can tee those together once again and hook that into a valve. I have a a nice PEX ball valve for pressure, uh, for for waste dumping, nice and quick and easy, and I can adjust it to whatever I feel is appropriate. Again, if you're a window cleaner, hopefully you know what is appropriate for that, because these aren't going to come preset for dumping out of an RO system. So you gotta you gotta know you're responsible for that. Um, the RO pressure vessels themselves, they are 4 inch by 40 inch, or aka 4040 pressure vessels. So you want to look for an RO 4040 pressure vessel. I got mine from Coastal Water Filters off of eBay. I'll put a link, if I can remember to do so, in the uh, description, because those guys are awesome. These things were 70 bucks, and I had a leak issue. Um, you can see the center ports on all these even though they're properly torqued um, and thread sealed they're leaking a little bit and those guys no problem they're sending me new ones awesome group so the pressure vessels were 70 bucks a piece and then the RO membranes that go inside were something like 135 a piece um, so you want to look for an RO membrane that does something in the neighborhood of 2600 gallons a day at 120 psi or less so just look at the specs on like an axion membrane like what they would use in a zero cart mm -hmm. you want something that's that good or better so a couple of those bad boys they don't have to be named brand um, in my opinion you don't get the same warranty benefits but i think they're pretty much the same thing in my last cart i ran it several years on a generic RO membrane, no problem. So that's my two cents. You do what you want. You can get a better one. If you want the warranty and all that, go for it. Um, the last thing you're going to need, so you can just tee your outputs together and run into the inlet of your final filter, which is going to be a 4.5 by 10 inch DI filter. You want a 4.5 by 10 inch filter housing, that is and there's a little canister that goes inside that holds DI media. 
Uh, the housing is like $35. The container that holds DI media is like $10, give or take. And then, uh, of course, a bag of DI media. Get yourself a five pound bag. That's enough to fill it. And with this setup, it'll last you a couple seasons probably. DI is really not doing much on here. So a five pound bag of that. Uh, and again, mm -hmm. check your thread sizes and just make sure you get what you need to go in and out mm -hmm. of this guy because sometimes it's hard to find these in three quarter. Sometimes they're one inch. So you have to get the proper adapters. But it's not that hard, you can do this. Um, and you can simply ditch the bracket that goes with this and screw it to your bottom plate or if you want to get fancy like I did. If you know how to weld, you can weld a spacer in to boost that up so your screws aren't hitting the ground. And then I just drilled holes in the bottom to, with the welder, that's why they're not round. <laughs> uh, we got some holes there so we can get up through to the screws. That way the screws aren't getting all beat up. But you could, do, you could do this without a welder. You could screw it straight to the bottom plate and say heck with it. Or get yourself some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of a spacer that would keep the screws protected. There's different things you could do. Get creative, you know. Um, and that's about it. There's really not a lot to it. I put the equivalent of a Saturday. I did it over the course of several Saturdays, an hour here, an hour there. But if you get everything together, you can put this together in an afternoon. Um, oh, the other thing I should say, you might be wondering about fixing the RO vessels to your cart. If your cart doesn't have enough cross members, you can get a piece of diamond plate like I did, bolt it on there, and then bolt your cart, uh, your RO brackets to it. These pressure vessels come with those straps, so you can strap them right on with the equipment that's included. You don't have to worry about anything for that. Same goes for all this stuff. This housing comes with that piece to bolt it to there. That one comes with screws and everything. The biggest thing you're going to need is a drill to drill holes appropriate for whatever you're doing. And this setup, you might wonder how it works. And I'll show you this. The proof's in the pudding, right? My water is only turned on that much. So I just turned it off. I'm going to turn it back on. It's only on that much as compared to all that. Don't mind my nasty house here. <laughs> the house is actually quite nice. It's just the foundation doesn't look so great. So, just with that little bit of pressure, with all that restricted, we don't have full flow at all. But this is what we're getting. Full on rinse bar and it sprays out two feet easily. Easily. We could do so much more. Look at all the water I'm letting out of the dump valve. I could cut that way back. We could turn the water way up. But we've got flow for days. And I checked my TDS on here. It runs to zero, no problem. It comes out of the ROs at one. So that DI media will last forever. So let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to help you out. I'm sorry I don't have footage of the actual building process, but literally all it is is drilling holes and hooking up fittings. That's all it is. There's not a lot to it. You can do this, guys. All right, have a good one.